Okay, so what I have to say in this audio video, it may not be any new material that's not known, but I think that it's something that's relevant um, historically, not just in the past, but in the present. And so it's something that I think I just want people to think about and uh, just be aware of and um, to move our lives more towards freedom and uh, independence rather than tyranny and control. And so this is why I have a pair of handcuffs in my in this video. So what this video is entitled is Systems of Control. And it's based on the recognition that there are all kinds of systems of control and I just want to put a summary or an outline of the different types and varieties of systems of control so you can know them when you see them and have point out the problems how they work how they operate and antidotes or solutions ways that you can counteract systems of control and also so you can not be uh, promulgating or uh, reinforcing or in any way living your life in a way where you are an agent of or for systems of control. Um, so, on that note, there are basically seven basic fundamental systems of control. You have the intellectual systems of control, the emotional systems of control, physical systems of control, social systems of control, economic s systems of control, political systems of control, and then technological systems of control. Um, the goal of, of human society throughout history is, is this struggle um, of human beings to become free of all the different forms of arbitrary systems of control, whether it is uh, rulers or kings or oppressive governments and tyrannies. And we should keep to this. We should stick to this and stand firm. So l let me start with the intellectual systems of control. I'm not going to, you know, lay out all the different ways that these work, but just give kind of a, a general outline and just say that this is a basic principle that's operating in, in not necessarily in all systems of control, but it's one system of control. Um, intellectual and, and and much of the intellectual systems of control are actually based on ignorance the the whole goal of intellectual systems of control is to keep the average person or the mass of people ignorant to maintain a sustained state of ignorance uh you know, lack of education, illiteracy, what have you, and and maybe even uh, stupefying the mind and and creating an incapacity to think clearly. And I think that's the the main. I can't really add anything to that. You know, the the intellectual systems of control they all operate along that principle. And But there is an antidote to all intellectual systems of control, and it is knowledge. I don't think that, I don't agree with that term exactly 100% that knowledge is power, but knowledge can be a, a, a means to freedom and to um, being free of all these systems of control, being able to see them for what they are and identify them, and to be able to formulate effective strategies to 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 be free of these systems of control whether they're intellectual or otherwise now emotional systems of control are very different than intellectual systems of control they are based primarily on shame the whole point is to 
shame you, you know, and to say that we're going to control you through your emotions by shaming you and making you feel bad about yourself, being feel bad about what you are doing or how you're living or how you choose to live. And, you know, of course you see this in religions, but you see it in politics and in everything. Even in, in, in the family structure, you see over and over again this, this principle being played out of shaming individuals specifically as an emotional system of control. And um, But there is an antidote, and I think there's two ways to look at it. One way to look at it is as uh, recognition, that instead of shaming people, instead of living your life feeling ashamed or shaming others, or being motivated or trying to motivate others by shame, rather rec uh, giving people recognition and giving yourself recognition. And there may be other ways to say that, but the point is, is that shame and shaming are often just systems of control. And the truth is, there's, there's an assumption that that's how the correct way, say, to raise a child and I would say sometimes yes, sometimes no. I don't know if if we really look closely at these things, we probably can come up with better remedies, i.e. giving our children recognition for all the good that they're doing and pointing them in the right direction rather than shaming them. So then the, the next is physical systems of control. These are almost by and large all of them are based on on force. That you know you're physically forcing someone to do or not do something or there's a serious threat of physical force or violence or whatever you want to call it. The the best remedy for this is not fear. Um, there's no reason to be fear, afraid of force ever even if it comes in the form of tanks, airplanes, bombs, and machine guns. The best remedy for this is strength. And this is why I advocate that everyone be trained in martial arts from the youngest age so that everyone has a capacity to, to exercise their right to defend themselves. And this is why in the United States of America, under the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution, we have the right to keep and to bear arms. You see, because that is, you, you never want to have to exert that right to protect your rights, but this is strength, and we will retain that strength, and that is that. Then there is the social systems of control. And these are just based on pressure, social pressure, peer pressure, and all the different kinds of pressure within the family, in the school, in the social group, um, you know, walking down the street. Um, the, there's, there's two ways to look at that um, the, as the, the, the solution or remedy or antidote is to just have a clear sense of boundaries on the one hand and to have a resistance to all forms of social pressure. Um, you know, simple as that, you know, and just have build up a, a resistance and immunity to social uh, pressure, peer pressure, whatever you want to call it. Often the people who are socially pr pressuring you may or may not really truly be your peers. So who are they to tell you anything? Um, then there is there are economic uh, systems of of control. And we see this very clearly in our current, present economic situation and economic conditions right now. Um, this, this is in 2012, January 2012, and it's a carryover of, you know, probably decades of um, things that were being set up to become this. Um, but really... The, the real basis of all economic um, systems of control are based on the, the one principle, the principle of inequality. If you can keep people in unequal economic conditions and situations, you can basically 
manipulate some because they're poor, manipulate others by giving them wealth, and then keep everyone else under control by having them have just enough so they can pay their bills and so they have to keep their job and so on. So there's a very you know, subtle kind of machinations going on there on a large scale to maintain in many different systems throughout the world economic systems of control. But the, the remedy is equality. Equality on the individual level, on the, social, on the uh, individual level, and on the collective level, locally and internationally. So that's the responsibility of every individual to incorporate equality into every aspect of their life. You can't be bought, bought and sold, really, if you say, no, I'm not going to be bought and sold. Then there are political systems of control. All of these, all of them, all of them are based on deception. That's how they work. It's all lies. You, you got it right. Your intuition is correct. Your sense of it is correct. That's the reality. It's all deception. It's all lies. All manipulation, machinations, you name it. But there is an antidote. There is a remedy, and it is truth. And there's two sides to this thing of truth. You, you demand truth from yourself. You are honest with yourself, and you're honest with others, and you de demand truth from yourself. But also, in, in the same breath, you demand truth from all politicians. And if they don't give you truth and honesty, you run them out on the rails. If you have to physically go in and take them out by the scruff of their neck, that's what you do. So, keep it real simple. And, and I'm telling you straight up, this is how you have to think about it. Then the, the final tool of tool, one of the, the final tool of that, that is a, you know, a system of control is the technological <clears throat> tools. Now, the technological <clears throat> in and of themselves are not really systems of control, although you can see structures being set up more and more to inch by inch, slow by ever by slow to become, you know, this integrated network of systems of control that people can't get out of, you know, you see this all the time. If you look closely, you'll see it, whether it's, you know, I, I'm not going to go into and elaborate on it too much, but the main point to recognize about technological um, systems of control, they really just carry out the other systems of control. So if you address the others, the technology will take care of itself. It will not be um, either misused or abused, or if it's technology that can benefit us, it will not be disused. So Basically, a way to look at the technological systems of control or what part it, technology plays, you can look at things like radio, television, um, newspapers. Historically, they served very effectively as, as uh, to augment all the other systems of control, whether they were social, economic, political, intellectual, emotional, or physical. Um when you when you think about physical uh systems of control based on force uh military you know tanks airplanes machine guns all they do that's just technology that augments that particular system of control so don't be afraid of technology um we are the creators of technology we can reshape what it is how it works um make it safe and we can define how it's going to be used. And we can say that, well, we don't accept any systems of control. We only accept freedom, um, intellectual freedom, emotional freedom, physical freedom, social freedom, economic freedom, and political freedom. And we will not accept any technologies that enforce uh, systems of control. So that's my basic concept. Be free in every way. And don't let anyone take any of your freedoms. And that is that. No exceptions.